please welcome to Redemption Island, Mr. Robert Cecily Anno. One truth still about Redemption Island, you still only have five minutes. It's still a five-minute clock. Could we get the five-minute clock back on the screen? And your time for Fast Five Take Two starts now. There is a part of our population, we call them one percenters. They are the human predators that live amongst us. There always has been, there is, and there will always be this criminal element out there looking for their next victim. Your job is not to become their prey. In the short time we have together, I'm going to discuss personal security as it relates to protecting your person, your home, your data, and your devices. Let's talk home security and home invasions. Eight years ago this week, 300 miles north of here, in Cheshire, Connecticut, Jennifer Hawk Pettit and her two daughters were brutally murdered in a horrific home invasion. Dr. William Pettit, husband and father, survived scarred for life. There are a number of things you can do to prevent something like this from happening. But when we hear this, we live in denial thinking that it can't happen to me. And that prevents us from putting those systems in place. So I'm going to give you two things right now to protect yourself, and it's easy. Lock your doors and install a home security system. And when you hear that, you say, well, I don't want to live like that. Like you don't want to be paranoid. I am pretty sure that when you get in your vehicle, you put your seatbelt on, and you do that because you are being proactive and you're being smart and safe. Locking your doors and installing a home security system is being proactive, smart, and secure. It's as simple as that. And then there's identity theft. Last year and every year, almost 12 million people become victims of this crime. And the reason is because our data is out there for the taking. With a quick search and the right tools, I search Mark Sanborn, Laura Stack, and it's not too difficult to determine they live in the close proximity of each other. With another couple of minutes in the right search, you could find photos of vehicles in the driveway with license registration numbers. With that information, you get name, address, phone, email, cell phone, birth date. And from there, potentially you can get social security numbers, even credit card numbers in some cases, and tax forms. With that information, a criminal hacker can then go and create new lines of credit, take over existing lines, and even tax identity theft. There are a number of things you can do to protect yourself. I'll give you two. There's identity theft protection. You've seen these services listed on the, online and in TV, and they've matured quite a bit over the years. They're designed to proactively protect you, to watch your back, and assist you in the event that something goes wrong. And then there's a credit freeze. Credit freeze locks down your social and your credit report, preventing new account fraud. Mobile security. I did a not yet with that slide. Thank you. I did a study with one of my clients, McAfee Antivirus, not too long ago, called Love, Romance, and Technology. Basically, we studied 18 to 75-year-olds in their digital romantic lives. And unsurprisingly, we discovered that 18 to 24-year-olds, they sexed a lot. You know what sexting is? It's sexy text messages, right? But you know what was kind of surprising to us? 
Do you know who sexts the most? 50 to 75 year olds. Yes. Picture that. Picture that. So there are two things you need to do to protect yourself. Password, protect your device, and make sure whoever you are sexting, they password protect their device. Simple as that. There always has been, there is, and there will always be this criminal element out there. Your job is to put those systems in place, all right? And when it's all said and done, don't worry about anything I've said, really. But do something about it. Thank you, CPAE, CSP, Victoria LaBaume, I love you. Thank you. Thank you.